Hello, it's me, Kyle. Welcome to Give Pause Hobby, the channel where I stop to appreciate the things I love to fill my free time with. So today we have something a little bit different programming wise. Um, I've been sitting on this printout, Battle Card Market Garden, um, for a little while now. I've been putting together things for my uh, project Jumpstart uh, project. And um, I had seen this around on social media and it looked interesting enough, uh, really boiled down, um, you know, historical battle uh, that takes very little time with very few components uh, and is like visually compelling. So I, I've been sitting on it, hadn't really gotten to play it aside from like one learning game. And then I got an email um, of seeing if I was interested in previewing the uh, two maps that are going to be in the Battle Card Series 1 Kickstarter. So those will be coming up soon. Um, this is the first in the series, as the name and thumbnail probably imply. But um, I'll come back with those later. Once they're posted, the links will be down in the description. Um, there might even be one up here in the corner. We'll just have to see. And uh, I thought that this is actually a great opportunity to show off the battle card concept um, because A, it's out now on BGG. You can download it, you can print it, as long as you have dice and some counters or you cut out the counters that are available for you, like I did not, um, you can do that and you can start playing it now to find out if battle card as a system is something you're interested in. Um, but two, an even easier uh, point of entry, also down in the description, there's going to be lots of links down there, um, is to Chris C. Um, Kowchowd, Kowchowd, um on BGG, who put together a web app um, for this game, which is fantastic. It looks great. It's uh, It plays well. Sometimes you have to trade off the convenience of a web app for like something that just kind of looks janky or it feels not good to like you can see the things are happening that they're supposed to. It's just like not friendly to the user. It's super nice. And um, I think it's critical for anytime you have a game that is like uh, – you know, steps away from the table, so you don't have the rule book right there. The rules are available in the app, so it's not saying like go to BGG and read the rules. Like no, he Chris put them in the web app, and it's fantastic. Um, so the game takes five to eight minutes. The web app probably like three to five minutes. Um, so you can find out real quick if this is something you're interested in. So what I thought I would do in this video, whoop, I dropped my bag of dice, is uh, to take you through a, um, a learning, like a teach for the game. There really isn't much going on here. It's just this half. Now, in theory, what's supposed to happen, which I just haven't done with them yet, is that you would print these out and they would go back to back. Um, and the same is true for the other ones that I'll show later. Uh, and then, as I'll talk about um, when I'm going through it, there are these tokens, which are important, and there are tokens over here as well, uh, which are green, so I'm sure it's showed up great. But I just kept them on there because then I could use just something else. Uh, I might actually uh, cut the tokens out so I can look official later on, but for now, I'm just using extra ones from my, uh, you know, playtesting like kit of, of pieces. So let's uh, let's get into it. So looking on the what will be the back side of your card, the Battle Card Market Garden Solitaire Game by Nils jo uh, Johansson, Johansson and David Thompson. And then uh, the, the actual like series one is going to be published by Postmark Games. So uh, components. Together with these rules and the map, the game is played using six markers located on the lower edge of the postcard, um, four control markers, one weather, and one marker for 30 core. Uh, then 8d6, so three for the allied units, four for the German units, and one for dice rolls. So here's my bag of, of goodies that I've been using for uh, the different battle card systems. So I have... Um, as best I can, colors to match like roughly the, the dice spaces on the map. Um, so I have some blue, green, red, white, 
uh, and then a couple of like off color, a purple and a brown for like the turn or just each one needs like a die roll for something. Um, and then I have those markers, old, uh, or not old, but um, pandemic legacy uh, cubes. So in a few different colors. Now going through this teach, I plan on doing teaches, teach and plays for the other ones as well. But the great part about the system is like you would imagine, there's a lot that once you learn one, it's going to be applicable to the other ones as well. Now they all have slightly different feel, um, as you would imagine, because they are different theaters in war. This is actually uh, a thing that happened. Um, Project Market Garden and um, in the other ones that are going to be coming out from Postmark Games, they actually have a little blurb about like a map of where exactly it took place and a little like paragraph of the backstory. If you're interested, there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, David Thompson has shared on social media, but also the design documents on um, BGG. But for, for right now, we're going to kind of move into the game at hand. Um, uh, oh, one last thing about dice. I, as you'll see in the playthrough, these dice are great because they're just what I had around and they're roughly in the colors I want. What I'd really love are the little dice, like the, the 40K ones that at least used to come in all the 40K stuff, like the, the little mini guys, um, because then it just takes up less real estate on the map. So sorry for them being big and chunky, um, but especially when I, you know, make the my little kit my my battle card kit um it'd be nice to have the specific colors i need um in smaller dice that don't take up as much space but for now i'm just again using stuff from the prototype box all right for setup uh, and i'll show you me setting up uh, with me talking about it so dice uh units hereafter are placed on the indicated spaces with matching strength uh, which would be the dice value. The allied units are placed on the left of the main road and the German units on the right. All right, then there are four areas, one per control marker. So you're going to place one marker on each of the spaces with the German symbol facing up. Now, I already talked about how I'm not using the provided markers. So what I'm doing is placing the cubes uh, over on the like uh, allied uh, symbol and they're staying over there until I control a space and then I'll move them over onto the map. So um, just a heads up, mine will look different than as intended by the setup rules. Uh, all areas begun under German control. Place the weather marker on the sixth space on the weather track with the fog side space up. Um, now again, I'm using the cube, but shouldn't be a big issue. And then 30 core starts in Belgium. That's my blue cube. So the first thing you're going to, uh, or rather the last thing uh, as part of setup, um, and on the card, you'll notice that uh, they helpfully have um, some color you know, differentiation here. Um, and in the, the other games in the series, it's not by color, it's by like they've numbered the things that are going to be repeated. Because this airdrop we're about to do you will not repeat that because it's in the black bar area. That's all like before game setup. So the last thing of setup, um, you're going to roll 1d6 to adjust the starting strength of, for each allied unit. On a 1 or a 2, they are minus 2 strength. 3 or 4 is minus 1, and a 5 or 6, no change. Um, so we're just figuring out how uh, successful they were in being inserted into theater. So uh, did they show up with all the troops they were supposed to? Great. Lose some? Not so great. Lose a lot? Yikes. Uh, and that's, that's the end of the setup. So again, the black bar area, those parts will not be repeated. So then it says round structure. After completing the airdrop, begin play, repeating the round structure below until the game ends. Oh, I mean, so they are also numbered here, but the, the color is what stuck uh, out to my eye first. Uh, on the map, you can see these five steps are the five that we're gonna go through now, and um, which is helpful just to remind you, once you get the flow of the game, you probably don't be, uh, probably don't need to be reading the back of the, uh, the rules, especially if you put it on two sides, it won't be available for you to read. Um, but that's also why I just kept them side by side so I could learn the game and ensure that I'm not accidentally cheating when I'm playing it. So the five actions are gonna be battle, 
German reinforcements, Allied advance, airborne reinforcements, and then the weather track, which is also the turn marker. So let's jump down to the bottom and just give you an idea of uh, victory conditions or loss conditions. So ending the game, you win if the 30 core marker moves into the Arnhem area. That's the most northern spot of the four areas and uh, the 30 core starts down in a fifth kind of bigger Belgium area. So it's going to need to travel up all the way up to the top and then you win. Uh, simple, as you'll see. Uh, you lose if an allied unit is removed from the map due to combat or if the weather marker moves off the track. So if you lose any dice, even just one, game over. Um, and if you're on the one at the bottom of the weather track with the turn marker and it has to move in that fifth step, then the too much time has elapsed and you lose there as well. So it is, I'm um, just going to, from experience, having played just about 10 games or so, it is not a walk in the park. You are uh, constricted, constricted, restricted. It's a, it's a, it's a, a tight schedule, <laughs> uh, time-wise. Um, and then there's also the chance of rolling dice, which is not always on your side. So let's go through the five steps that are going to be on loop until the game is won or it is lost. First up, battle. Choose to attack or defend with each allied unit. Now, critically, there is not a third option of abstain. You need to attack or defend. Um, you're going to resolve the battle for each area separately. Compare allied and German strength. The side with the higher value has advantage. And if there is, a t there is no higher value, they're both tied at four, let's say, then there's actually a column or a row over on this strength track that's going to be no for no advantage. Roll 1d6 and consult the appropriate combat results table. And last but not least, German units can never be reduced below one. Leave it on the board. So looking over at the map side, which would be face up, this is going to be kind of the, uh, the brain of the battle card system. Um, now, just as a, uh, as a, a little, like, you know, spoiler, um, this is going to be on, at least so far, the Series 1 maps also have this combat results table, and it's different. It not only is, like, sometimes slightly rules-based different, like how advantage works or whatever, but also the results. So you're going to roll a die for your combat, and then that's going to determine that leftmost column of one, two to four, or five to six. Then you're going to look over to the side, did you attack or did you defend? And then did the allies have uh, a um, advantage? Did the Germans have advantage? Or was there no advantage? And that's going to the die roll, whether it's attack or defense, and where advantage was or was not on that battle are the three variables that are going to give you a result. Um, and then there's a color coding. If it's a green uh, minus number, that means the allies lose some strength. So you just reduce the die number. If it's brown, same, but for German. Remembering the Germans can never leave the map. If ally Technically, the allies can never leave the map either because if they do, it's game over. Um, and then there's one other thing on there. Uh, there's a little green star. And what that means uh, is down at the bottom of the table, it says flip control to its allied side. Or in my world, I'm going to move that red cube over from the side of the map. Uh, and then last but not least, there are a couple uh, helpful reminders. No is the shorthand for no advantage. And NE, no effect. Um, so as being something designed to go on like a postcard size, rules are going to be at a uh, like, like, you know, written out rules. That's going to be at a premium. So space is limited. Uh, so there's going to be an amount of shorthand. Sometimes in the rules there, uh, at least there have been a couple of times where in a full-on rule book, I'm sure they would have spent maybe one or two more sentences to make something clear. Um, so there is a little bit of interpretation um, or, you know, just kind of putting your previous experience with the series to work, um, which hopefully these videos can help out with uh, because there's just not 
an endless supply of rule space. It's on the front and back of a postcard. So that was step one. Moving on to step two, German reinforcements. Start from the top area of the map and work your way down, increasing each German unit by strength of one. Uh, if German strength is higher than Allied strength and the area is under Allied control, the Germans retake control. So you flip that marker over to the German side or move the cube back to its uh, timeout zone. You only increase the German unit in the second area uh, if Arnhem is under German control. Nij Megan, I'm probably completely butchering that name. That's why I've been avoiding saying it so far. Um, but uh, critically on the map, it's the area that does not have, it's kind of like in slashes, and it does not have a starting allied die. So you need to move into that, and we'll get into that in the next step. Um, it starts weaker at only one strength for German, and it only gets increased if uh, Arnhem to its north is still under German control. So if you can keep uh, its neighbor on lock, then it won't get much bigger. Um, but if you allow it to get bigger and you need to move into it, it can be a little bit of a problem. Third step, Allied advance. You may choose to advance either the 30 core marker or an Allied unit by moving it to an adjacent area. So, 30 core can only advance if the area it's moving into is under Allied control. So it starts in Belgium, you need to have Eindhoven under Allied control for it to move into there. So on that first turn, probably a pretty standard move would be to attack that German die. If you fail that attack, um, you do not take control of the area, then that's a problem, and 30 core is just gonna stay in Belgium. It needs to know that you are in control of the zone it's moving into. And then, critically, when 30 core moves into an area, remove the German unit from play. So that die goes away, there is no more reinforcement to uh, take place there, you just don't have to worry about that region anymore once 30 core is marched into it. Now the second option you have, you can choose to move an allied unit, um, to the uh, uh, adjacent area. It doesn't have to be north, but typically it is. An allied unit can only advance if it begins in the same area as 30 core. So for instance, you could not at the very beginning of the game say, you know what, Arnhem's already under German control. I'm just gonna take that unit up there and I'm gonna move down and I'm just gonna like lay the hurt in that second, that Nijmegen area. Um, because that's 30 core isn't up there. So the allied units don't feel confident in leaving an area if they don't have the backing of 30 core. Um, so in theory, once you took over uh, Eindhoven, so you have control there because you battled and won, and then you move 30 core in, then the next turn, in theory, you could feel free to move that allied die up, like out of the area. Now why would you want to do that? You already have a die in the other area, but the next uh, paragraph says, if an allied unit moves into an area with another allied unit, sum their strength to a max of six and discard one unit from the game. So this is uh, the only way that you can, no that's not true, it is the primary way that you will be able to reinforce um, units if they have lost strength uh, in their battle and defending. So that was step three. Step four, first airborne reinforcement. Roll 1d6 and compare it to the number on the track occupied by the weather marker. So it starts the game at six. If the result is equal or higher than the number on the track, increase the strength of the first airborne division by one and flip the weather marker to its clear side. Once the strength of the first airborne division has been increased, skip this step. So it starts the game at a pretty unlikely chance uh, and then it just gets more likely as the game goes on. And once it happens, if you're using the marker, you flip it over to the sunny side or clear side and it can't happen again. Um, for mine, I'm probably just going to move the marker off to the side um, and then I don't forget and keep reinforcing because this is unlike German reinforcements, which are going to happen every turn, this can only happen one time. And it can only happen 
on that one area. So you have the first, the 82nd, and the 101st. So this only can affect the first airborne, which is the most, the northernmost unit. Um, so there's there's limitations to this step. And then once it's done, you can skip the step for the remainder of the game. In fact, the rules tell you to do so. And last but not least, weather track. You're going to move the weather track marker down one space on the track. So you start at six, move down to five. Now it just became one number easier for you to get those reinforcements for first airborne, but you're also one turn closer to the game being over. So this is a, a, a pretty short fuse of a game. Um, does not have a lot of time for you to, to mess around with different strategies. It, you need to be pretty single-minded in your, your march northward and uh, your success in battle. And that's it. That's the end of the rules section. Um, you know, front and back of a postcard, it's not much space, so there aren't that many rules. Um, the game is, as you'll see in the play in just a second, uh, and I've said before, it is limited in scope. Um, it's not going to be something that's going to balloon outwards into a 30, 45 minute thing. It is just, uh, you're in and out of the experience, and I'm not going to lie, most of the time you're going to be out of the experience and you have lost, um, which is, I think, perfectly fine. This, uh, they're all based on historical events, um, and, and sometimes, or many times probably, the events that you are reenacting, the odds were stacked against the, the actors that you are in control of. So whether that be against the Japanese or against the Germans or whoever, one of them, you are Canadians fighting the Germans, um, whoever you are acting as, you have a difficult task set in front of you. And sometimes there's really only one pathway to victory. In the other ones, you'll see sometimes there's a couple different ways you can go about it, but there's still the one primary way, the thing that you need to do that your unit is responsible for or the like crowning achievement of the project, um, Market Garden, uh, Moral River, or Malayan Campaign, or whatever else they may come out with in Series 2 and beyond. Um, but I've talked enough about it, how to play it, so let's get over to the table so I can show you how it plays. Whoosh. All right, so <clears throat> we're all set up here. Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, I just printed this off straight from the BGG files. Um, you can see the little cut lines here. So. Uh, you know, really this is meant to be put together on front and back side. And then you can cut out these um, these tokens. So you have the two sides of the uh, control, kind of like to, to make sure that uh, you know exactly who's in charge of each of the areas. And um, I'm just going to use the, you can see the little kind of grayed out or sepiaed out <laughs> version of the German kind of uh, symbol. So that's just going to be the norm because that's there. I mean, it's it's kind of browned out because it's supposed to be covered up with the token. I just didn't want to cut them out. So um, as I take control of areas, I will put a red marker over it to say, that's, that's my zone now. Um, same thing, we have the uh, the core, um, 30 core, who's down here, the little blue token. And then this one is the, probably the, the most problematic because it's important to know whether or not you have used the reinforcement of the first airborne. Um, I just will remember that, I suppose. Maybe I'll say something like, um, once I do, I'll move it off the track. I'll still keep it in line with the numbers, but if it's off the numbers, that means I've already done the reinforcement. All right, so time to get started. All right, so time to get started. And um, right off the bat, we need to make some hay because we need to move the, you don't have that many turns to get this up to there because each turn you can only do one movement and it's either the 30 core or one of your units to combine together. And as you can see, we currently don't have anything here in the, the third area. So we're gonna, we know we need to move at least one of our, uh, our groups up there. And um, so we need to start making some hay. So I'm going to uh, 
attack here in first area five. As you can see, uh, when we're attacking, I have advantage because I have more numbers than over here. Um, and so that is going to be a clear, decisive victory. Um, and I get to put one of the things. Uh, I'm going to attack there as well. That is another. So no loss on my side. That's a good, good feeling. I uh, can't do anything there. Um, and uh, do I want to, you know what, sure. I'm going to do it. I'm going to attack up here. Okay, that's, yeah, I kind of saw that happening. So uh, I take a hit, um, don't have, uh, obviously don't have control up there, but we're still doing pretty well. So German reinforcements, um, we are going to go down this way, um, and this, third, or this second area up here will only go up by one, if the Germans control that top region, which they do. Um, these ones will still get uh, reinforced. They can never go below one, um, like the rules say, so they're always going to be kind of a bit of a pain. But um, we're going to do an allied advance here, or ad advance, um, which I guess, yeah, stays here, but then the German just goes away. So no more reinforcing there, because uh, 30 core got moved. So. Uh, airborne reinforcement. We need a six or greater. We didn't get it, so it's going to go down. Uh, and that will be reinforcing that top one. So next round, uh, go to battles. We already have control here, so I'm not going to do anything like outlandish. I'm just going to say I'm going to defend. Uh, and nice, so there's just no change. Um, now, had I chosen to uh, attack, since I still have. Um, control here that would have been really helpful but you know I'm a I'm, I'm, I'm scared I guess all right we're gonna try to attack here uh, four so uh, we do have advantage so we do take control of that which is going to be critical because then this isn't going to keep getting reinforced and but when we both go down by one it's not the end of the world uh, and that's all so advance uh, sorry German reinforcements they're going to go up by three. Um, that does not get reinforced because they do not have, uh, they need to be higher than my strength to take take the uh, control back. So for now, we are okay. And I'm going to move, um, yeah. I kind of want to, well, let's see. I wish, uh, yeah, there's just so little time. Okay. Uh, airborne reinforcement, five or greater. Hey, look at that. That is actually pretty. All right, so now we'll move it off to the side because you can only be reinforced once. Um, and then we go back to the top. So we only have one battle up here. And you know what? I, th I, have, I have advantage. I feel like I need to take advantage of that. I'm, I'm attacking and keep them in their place. Four. That's not bad. Um, I mean, we both just get knocked down one. Not great. Um, and then, so the problem, yeah. So move that up. And I'm going to have to to win that battle this time. So we move down because we've already done the reinforcements. Um, now, when it moves off the track, game is over. So we're up against the clock here. Uh, okay. So, oh, sorry. I did not reinforce. There we go. Um, so that second area. Uh, sorry, I'm attacking. Uh, I know that seems like, but I mean, I, I think you can all assume that's what we're here to do. So uh, that was great one uh, left there. That... Now, okay, so I'm going to move 30 core here. So next turn, theoretically, I could move this into there, which means that last turn I would have... I just need to roll well. Um, I think I'm 
got to attack because there's a chance that I could just like stave off the worst. Right? Is that dumb? That might be dumb. We're doing it. Attacking. That wasn't dumb. Well, it doesn't change whether or not it's dumb. It just was, you know, worked out. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're moving. Uh, what's more important? Uh, actually, this is definitely more important because if we have, if we moved it out of here, even though they just have one there, they would obviously suddenly have more and they would take control. So we're going to destroy that as we go up there. And we are down to, um, whoop, there we go. So let's see, three to two. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Let's rewind the clock. I didn't have advantage there. So we both lost one. And then they gain one. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> so that goes away. Okay. Well, I think at this point I'm going to defend up in the top at Arnhem. Oops, that was a two. You know I'm not lying to you because that's bad. <laughs> that's a bad one for me to get. Oh, man. Um, oh, my gosh. Are you serious? So it's exactly what I have there is a two. And um, even defending, the Germans have an advantage. They and you have to attack or defend. You can't elect to do nothing. Um, so they, they wipe out that unit. I was gonna move this in, bring out to a six for the final turn. Man, well, shoot. <laughs> All right, so that is a uh, battle card in Market Garden. And as you can see, it is a really fast playing game. Um, that was even with me narrating most of the things that were going on. Um, and it was still eight or less minutes. Uh, it's a really tight game. Um, at least, you know, this one, Market Garden, there really is only one way to, to uh, achieve victory. And that is to have successful battles, to stay in control and to move that uh, 30 core up the road and um, with there being a really tight time frame there's not a lot of room for posturing there's a little bit and um, you know some some obvious different strategies you can go for but it's not like a wide open field it is a, a I mean it's a, a historical event it's supposed to reflect what was going on at the time and it's going to mean that there's a challenge set in front of you and um, within eight or fewer minutes, uh, way fewer than that once you get used to it, or even further, uh, you know, shorter time if you get onto the app because that takes control of everything for you. Um, you can find out if you were strategic, tactical, and lucky enough to win. Uh, but again, super fun, really quick. Uh, you need to get some dice for it uh, if you print it out. But again, the link down below in the description goes to a fan-made um, web application, which is a, a great uh, resource. The rules are all there. Sometimes the web apps, like they, they have internalized the rules, but it's it's a bit uh, opaque because we, we you don't see that as much as a player. They're all there for this. It's a really clean clear system um, so please make sure if you're interested in this game check that out first but printing it out uh, you know in cardstock or, or on paper and then getting some dice that's super easy too I highly encourage it because it's a, a fun little game and I think it's gonna be a really nice harbinger um, for the other battle card games to come and uh, as I complete them or as I post them those will be up here in the corners um, but also link down below in the description. And if it's still late September, early October in 2023, you still have time to go to the Kickstarter page for the Battle Card Series 1, um, which uh, I'm a little bit biased because I'm playing it and obviously enjoying myself, but I think you should take a look at it. So uh, thanks for taking a pause with Give Pause. We'll see you next time. <laughs>